Welcome back to AWS On Air. I just said this 20 minutes ago, I'm saying it again. We are on the floor of the New York City Summit Expo Hall. Behind us are many, many booths of partners and AWS teams of all sorts talking about really cool things happening, particularly the launches that happened during the keynote today. Mm -hmm. And my name is Gigi Berenger. I'm a senior product manager here at AWS, but I'm also a host with AWS On Air with one of my best friends, as always, because of the hat and not in real life. Do you want to introduce yourself? <laughs> yeah, I'm Am Gravelny. Uh, I'm not on the floor, I'm in a chair. Um, but I'm a developer advocate here at AWS and also a host, but more important than the two of us. Way more important. We've got a wonderful guest joining us. Please introduce yourself to the people at home. Hey, I'm Shivan Michael Raj. I'm a senior product manager on the SageMaker Studio team. Yeah. All well, right. Welcome to Thank AWS you. On Air and welcome to your launch day. I heard you had a launch during the keynote today. Oh, certainly, yes. It's uh, very so, exciting. <laughs> uh, Amazon Q Developer is now uh, integrated with Amazon SageMaker. Mm, and uh, all Amazon and data it. scientists and <laughs> ML engineers can now access uh, Amazon Q Developer within Amazon SageMaker integrated development environment. Oh, I'm excited to see your demo on this. Oh, that's super cool. <laughs> it's so super you can, cool. You can start using QDeveloper right within the SageMaker environment. Exactly, you know. yeah. Okay, very Okay, cool. got it. So, I think we have a lot to learn about. We do. Based on us saying, that sounds cool. <laughs> we do have a lot to learn. Uh, we, we, what? We're, we're talking about productivity for our developers, right? Productivity for our data mm -hmm. scientists, all the people using SageMaker. Um, this, this enhances are, that experience, yeah. yes? I would say there are a couple of things. Let's take a step back and see uh, you know, what are the challenges that data scientists and ML engineers typically face when they want to build uh, models. Yes. And at AWS, we try to really go deep dive and understand what are the challenges of uh, you know, developers, data scientists, and ML engineers when they want to train and deploy an ML model. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we spoke to a lot of our customers, you know, the biggest pain points that came across are, one, um, when they want to build an uh, ML solution for their problem, where do they first start with? You know, there's a lot of documentation out there. But <laughs> a lot of content. Exactly. <laughs> it's really time consuming to read, and you don't even know what to read, right? Yeah. Because there's tons of information out there. And the second uh, uh, challenge is, even though there's this information out there, it's scattered everywhere. You do not know where to look for the information. Right. And um, it's not just uh, information overload. It's also a lot of like um, uh, cognitive overload to understand the documentation and figure out what it says. Right. So that is definitely one challenge. So once you figure out how, what features to use and how to use, then comes the challenge of like looking for code samples. You know, I'm sure yeah. like you would have gone down the rabbit hole. Oh yeah. And then <laughs> <laughs> it takes a lot of effort for our customers to go go and look for like the exact code samples that work for them. Yes. Yes. I mean, I I'm not an ML developer. Yeah. I've never trained an ML model, but I am a developer. Never. God. Never. No. Ever. No. That will change for sure now because yeah, I'm, I'm sure. going to show you how to train an ML model in 10 minutes. Yeah. Oh, well, now you have okay. no excuse. I got 10 minutes. I can He's give always you 10 like, minutes. oh, I'm so busy. I can't sit here and train it. It's like no, but I'm more of a DevOps guy. That I've worked in DevOps for a long time. You know, I've written a lot of code, different different uh, languages, C sharp, Python, etc. Yeah. One of the, you you nailed it. One of the hardest things for me is going out. I'm trying to do something very specific, right? Yeah. And I start searching, and you know, it's very lucky, let's say, if I can <laughs> find the exact thing that exactly. I'm looking for on a Stack Overflow page that's like three comments down that isn't the accepted answer, right? This is probably a situation that this, I'm describing <laughs> that many people have gone through. Exactly. Yes. And, uh, you know, shout out, number one, to that one Stack Overflow user that had the exact answer I was looking for. Or hero. Thank you, whoever you are. Uh, but this, this is easier is what you're telling me. Exactly. And Six the challenge the doesn't stop there. Once you get the code samples, right? You go and start executing these samples, and then you run into errors. Mm -hmm. And what do you do then? <laughs> Endless errors. Never like, had an error. I don't know. Like you, no, you're you go back to online <laughs> search. <laughs> <laughs> you go back to online search, again, you go back to documentation, forums, mm -hmm. and looking for all of this information. Yeah. And then there's a lot of context switching happening. So that is a big uh, dent in the productivity that could uh, 
actually improve for these uh, That's builders. That's exciting. Yeah. So uh, what I'm imagining, and you're going to tell me, and then you're going to show me if I'm wrong, is I'm using SageMaker. I uh, can't figure out why something's not working, or I can't remember how to do something specific. There is somewhere in there yeah. Amazon Q, our chatbot, but not just Q, Q for developers now that right. we released, I think in this spring, mm -hmm. correct me right. if I'm wrong, where Q for developers is giving you code snippets, is giving you recommendations, is helping you optimize code potentially, or you know, teach you code if well, you think, don't know. I think what's important too, right. Gigi, is like, Amazon Q developer has been available in several environments so right. far, right? Like I, I'm personally <laughs> big VS Code user, love my VS Code. I've been able to use Amazon Q developer in VS right. Code for a while, but we like to meet people where they're at, right? A lot exactly. of people are using SageMaker yeah. Studio. And so now, after today, they can start using Amazon Q yes. Developer. So a lot of our data scientists who use SageMaker Studio use uh, the Jupyter Lab uh, okay. IDE within Studio. And that's where Q Developer is going to be available. So it's going to benefit all of the users, uh, data scientists who are Fantastic. using Jupyter Lab. Yeah. Cool. Can we take a look? Can we, can I want we to just see jump it so in? Bad. Yeah, let's <laughs> take a look. Yeah. yeah. Let's jump in. Let, let's see it working. Maybe you can. Also, for those of us, yeah. definitely not speaking for myself, Never. Uh, <laughs> who are not as familiar with uh, SageMaker and SageMaker Studio, maybe you can show us some of uh, what SageMaker Studio looks like also, in addition to... That would be helpful. Yeah, give us some context. Never once in my life have I not known what something looks like, but I would love, yeah. <laughs> to, I would love to be brought up to speed if that were the case anywhere, anytime. Also, sure. we are live. So in the chat, if you have any questions about this, if you have anything specific that you want to see, again, we are still live. And we want to answer those questions verbally or in the chat to you. Yeah. yeah. All right. So I have here in uh, front of me in, uh, on the screen uh, the Jupyter Lab environment, uh, which you can use to uh, you know, train an ML model. And uh, it's not just training. You can do all of these different steps. Uh, like Typically, to build an ML model, you would start with like, uh, your data. Uh, you would start with data exploration. Then you prepare your data. And then uh, you figure out like what models to use for training. You mm -hmm. train your model. And then you deploy the model. And then you add those models to the model uh, pipelines. Right? Got it. So there are a list of steps here. And um, Amazon Q developer would help you across all of these steps. OK. Um, so um, I know you asked about like SageMaker Studio. So yeah. SageMaker Studio itself is um, an integrated development environment for data scientists and ML engineers. And it has a, a wide variety of tools. So Jupyter Lab is one of the um, you know IDs that we have. We also have R Studio. We have uh, uh, Code Editor, which is like the VS Code uh, okay. version of uh, mm, uh, version within Studio. So as uh, you just mentioned, we just meet the developers where they are, and we give them the tools. So um, it's like one integrated environment to do everything. Yeah, yeah we got, got some it. questions in chat too. I don't I don't want to cut you off. Um, but I Go think yeah. from some of the, uh, what I'm inferring from some of the questions here, uh -huh. we've got questions about, is this Python? Maybe we could talk a little bit. So Jupyter Lab, right? Yeah. This is an environment pretty standard for a lot of ML engineers, data scientists. This is a, a, a kind of like, it's not quite a REPL, right? It's not like right. a, a read, evaluate, print loop that, that some developers may be familiar right. with. But it is an environment where I can, take typically, please correct me if I'm wrong, <laughs> Python code, right, right, and start executing it exactly. in these cells, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. And so You're right. with SageMaker Studio, I have the option of using a provisioned Jupyter Lab environment. Exactly. Uh, yeah. And some of these nifty tools are included in exactly. the Jupyter Labs yeah. Yeah. So that's the benefit benefit of having like a managed ID. Mm -hmm. So even though Jupyter uh, Notebooks is open source, uh, the one that is available within SageMaker Studio is uh, comes with let's say the Amazon Q developer and uh, this one, and it also uh, provides you, you know, a managed uh, environment wherein you don't have to worry about the instances. You can just right. click on the and that's type of instance that you want. That's what you meant by. Prov it was provisioned for you through right, SageMaker, yeah. right? So right. this is the yeah. back end's running on AWS. It's already handled for you. Exactly. And then built into this offering that we already have had is where 
Q Developer comes in. So where is Q Developer in this yep. screen? Uh, <laughs> and we're going to pull your screen back up for everyone on Twitch to see too in just a second. So is everyone able to see my screen? Yes. Okay. We are good. So when you log into JupyterLab, you can uh, access the Q chat on the left pane here. Uh, and oh, okay. it's going to be available right here. And uh, you have a list of functions that are here. These are shortcuts that you can start using. But uh, just like any other chat interface, you can just go ahead and start entering your questions. And mm -hmm. it's going to give you guidance on like what you should do next, and along with the sample code. And let's say when you run the sample code, you get an error. It also provides you information on what exactly you need to do to fix that error. For example, mm -hmm. it can give you a fixed code, and then mm -hmm. you can just replace that code, and the error is uh, fixed. Got so it. I can just show you show yeah. some of that. Can we see yeah. a can we see a quick yeah. quick demo? So now what I'm trying to do is so the, uh, I'm just trying to take a uh, a sample data. This is uh, a data that is available in Kaggle. Uh, it's to predict uh, the taxi fares in New York, <laughs> and uh, so I have it in my S3 bucket here. So now I just say that okay, can you can I Okay. Can you give me sample code to import data from S3? Okay. Mm -hmm. So okay. what I want to do now is uh, I want to import this data from S3 and store it in a data frame. And then uh, from the data frame, I want to do a bunch of like exploratory data analysis, okay. a list of steps. But I do not know where to start with. So I'll probably ask you like what kind of exploratory data mm -hmm. analysis I should go with. And then I look at it. And then finally, I'll ask it to um, train a model using the data that we have. Yeah. Got it. So it's going to answer everything in that chat. Yeah. Yeah. And you can take whatever it's saying in that chat and then put it into your exactly. yeah. notebook. Wow, right. I see it even mentioning like uh, oh, you know, considerations really nice. <laughs> for parquet. Exactly. And so it's yeah. like, so it gives it's you got a full context here. description of like what exactly needs to be done here. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, it gives you the code mm -hmm. along with the fact that, you know, what needs to be what needs to be replaced along with like what do each of these lines actually mean? Yeah. Oh, right? that's yeah. so nice and helpful. <laughs> yeah, but it, it, it seems to also seem to have context about like this is a data engineer exactly. working on this, right? Yeah. Like yeah. okay, very cool. And it's a one click thing for you to just move it to the cell and now I can uh, oh. just replace it with uh, your uh, earlier data bucket variable there. Yeah. Oh cool. That's pretty sleek. I like what you were saying about it having context, because I think about how right, Q developer has been available in a few different contexts so far throughout so AWS, it, and yeah. this is not an, another one that's making it very specific. So it said file not found error. So let <laughs> me ask you to fix it. So This is all part of the demo. I see the error, but I want to see what Q says. Do you see the error? Gigi? Not yet. Where is the error? <laughs> oh, I see the What's error. under bucket name? I see it. Do I so see now, it? So now now it'll oh, talk about, go. yeah. So it will actually analyze the error for you. And then now that here I know what the uh, sample this one is, let me just. Oh. This is uh, the best part of copy-pasting code, is when it's you forget <laughs> to copy-paste all the code. That's nice. Or if you or only do one quotation. <laughs> yeah, if you miss a, uh, Also, the, that's the right. best part of yeah. copying so and pasting code. Uh, oh, now so now it's worked. Oh, look at that. So now the data is uh, <laughs> imported into my notebook here in a data frame. And now, uh, so now I have all of this data. I do not know what to do in terms of like exploratory data analysis. So let me give a I like that it's, what's yeah. the name that's in there in the chat? Jupernaut? Yeah. So like uh, astronaut? Right. <laughs> so Jupernaut <laughs> is like the uh, the AI extension of Jupiter. And okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a, that's a real thing. That's yeah. not thing. us being silly. Ah, I didn't know that <laughs> Adding either. it for someone's entertainment. <laughs> so you can look at the prompt here. I, I'm saying I need to perform some exploratory data analysis on my pandas data frame. And I need a Python function to uh, you know, use this data frame as an input, and I have to do some uh, data analysis. OK. So let's see what it generates. So it says, sorry. Nope, no. it says it's thinking. 
Is it possible to make the chat any wider so oh, we can yeah, see you, more you at can once? Still do that. My my poor eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Unwell. <laughs> So it's thinking, when it's thinking, what data is it, like where's the response coming from? Is that an AWS LLM yeah. that we're working with? So uh, is that, is this is silly? powered by Amazon Q Developer. So okay. that's one of the benefits that we get. It's powered by the latest foundation models. Got it. And it's also built with guardrails, right? Uh, both security guardrails and like, you know, uh, data privacy, privacy guardrails. Yeah. So for example, if you ask a question on hey, how can I hack, let's say, a deployment endpoint? It's going to say I, am, I, I wouldn't be able to answer this question. As so, it should. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> As it should. So anything you ask it, it's going to keep within your AWS environment. Correct. Any yeah. data that you might refer to, it's going to only pull from maybe your environment and the AWS foundational models and nothing else. Or is it even not going to pull from your environment? It's just going to pull from the foundational models. Uh, so. As part of the input, we also send some of the information from the notebook okay. so that it has context on like how to answer these questions. Very cool. But the responses come from the foundation model and all of the documentation extra that we have online. Yeah. Cool. Great. So what, what does it tell you? Uh, so oh, look at that, <laughs> perform EDA. It's even yeah. a, a well-named function. Right, yeah. You know? that's, that's amazing. <laughs> so it just gave me a code to add a function for EDA. So let me just replace this code here, and then it says, we're doing a count plot. Yeah. We're doing uh, value counts. So okay. check for missing values, check for duplicates, check for categorical columns. It has a bunch of things that it, uh, it has suggested me to do. So now uh, let me oh, just. That's, it even tells you, too, performs exploratory exactly. data analysis. Yeah. Yeah. That's oh, where EDA is. That's really is. nice. That's cool. And I didn't have to think about any of these uh, aspects it just gave me. And then I can choose to remove some of them if I want. Right. Yeah. You yeah. Can you can evaluate the yeah. code that it generates so for you. You can see that now it provides uh, information on all of these different columns. Now you have statistics around all of these columns. And uh, yeah. Very cool. So that got us all the way there just by asking a few questions. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I love it. So now, I mean, one of the important things that data scientists probably do, especially for regression uh, algorithms, is they look at like the correlation matrix and see if there are variables that are highly correlated. So now let me ask, OK, give me sample code that creates a correlation heat map. So it's. I think, I think we're going to probably gonna leave <laughs> this for an exercise for Got the it. audience yeah. to go yeah. check it out yes. when they go check out Got this it, yeah. new uh, access to Q developer in uh, SageMaker Studio. Any sure. parting words, any uh, getting started tips that you got for people watching? Where can we find things? Yep. So getting started <laughs> tip I want, the first tip I want to share is like getting started is not easy, uh, not hard at all. So not you can just at all. Very easy. Yeah, it's <laughs> Very super easy. easy. And then uh, you can just start developing a model in 10 minutes. If we had 10 more minutes, I would have shown you like how, how we can uh, develop it. I love it. Yep. But we don't. <laughs> yeah, so right. unfortunately, That's okay. so go check it out in the SageMaker studio uh, yourself, and we will be right back with more content. And look out for what's you know, posted and all of these things. Yeah. There you go, yeah. They'll be online. Yeah.